Okay, this is the 11th lecture. I'm going to talk about real sequence for this lecture. Real numbers. We'll focus on real numbers. Before, we'll focus on arbitrary sequences. Like, general sequences. And we're going to talk about upper lower limit. Going to do some properties about it. And then we're going to start... We're going to start series. Some intro about series. Okay, let's just start it. Okay, so first, <coughs> I'm going to introduce the definition of diverge to infinity. It says that, okay, if it diverges to infinity, it means that for any positive number, there are infinite many terms that are greater than this positive number. So no matter how big you choose, you can still find a cutoff such that after the cutoff, the tails are all beyond this point, which describes the divergence behavior. And similar definition for diverge to negative infinity. And now I'm going to define the upper limit and the lower limit. So let S be a real sequence, and E is a set of all subsequential limits. Well, the pot, the pot, the infinity and the negative infinity might also be in the set, but we define the limit supremum or upper limit of the sequence to be the supremum of the supremum of E. A lower limit to be the infimum and denote as like this or this or sometimes like this or this. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's a set of all subsequential limits, and then you define their supremum and their infimum. All right, so we have a theorem for this, and we're gonna use this theorem to develop our root test and ratio test, and then there are further applications. And but we should start from here, right? The properties of upper limit. Well, we know that. The limb soup is in E, which means that there's some sequence, there's some subsequence converged to Sn. So A says that Sn is in E. Alright, now we'll discuss case by case. First, first, if it's infinity. If that's positive infinity, then we know that E is not bounded above, right? And we want to show that, okay, what we want to show, that there exists a subsequence converged to infinity, right? With that being said, then, then we know that, okay, then we know this is an E, right? Okay, well, what does it mean by E is not bounded above? It means that, okay, for any positive M, there exists some set such that S is squared than M, right? Basically, the negation of being bounded and real, which means that there exists S and K, such that converges to S greater than M, right? So we know that S minus, we know that S minus M is greater than zero. For this, such that we know K greater equal to N implies that minus S is less than S minus M, right? Which means that S and K minus S, S minus M, N minus S, you basically, and for this, implies that M is greater than S and K. Right? And this shows that S and K goes to infinity, right? Because, look, 
for any m greater than zero makes it n such that k greater than n as in case greater than m. So that diverges infinity, right? And case two, if the it is negative infinity, then we know then we know that the only point is negative infinity. So all subsequence converges to negative infinity, which means that of course, there's any and three is the case that if it's real, if it's real number, we know that, okay, then we know that E is not empty and E is bounded above. Right? And remember from last lecture, I think from last lecture about subsequential limits, there's a theorem about it. There is a theorem, but like the set of subsequence forms a closed subset. I remember somewhere, but yeah, that's a theorem. Like the subsequential limits forms a closed subset, this one. The set of subsequential forms a closed subset, which means that E is closed. And then we know that the supremum is an, that the supremum is an E about this is theorem we proved before, right? The supremum is in the closure. And when closure is equal to itself, when it's closed. We know that the supreme is an E. And then we prove B, part B. It states that, okay, so part B says that if a number is greater than the upper limit, then there is a cutoff such that any n greater than capital N we have, this S n must be less than x. Well, let's just approach this by contradiction. So suppose for a contradiction such that S n greater than equal to x for infinite many, many n, right? So for infinite many n's, we call these terms, call these term s n prime, right? So all the s n's are greater than or equal to x. Now we have case work. Case one, if s n is unbounded, If it's unbounded, right, that means that it diverges to infinity, right? So diverges to infinity means that this sequence, this sequence is the subsequence of the original sequence. This subsequence is formed by we pick all the points that are greater than or equal to x. So if it's unbounded, it diverges to infinity, which means that infinity is a subsequential limit. And then we keep going on, we have infinity is greater than x, of course, and it's greater than, greater than the supremum. It's a contradiction, right? Because this is a suprema, right? Contradiction. All right, now case two. Sn prime is bounded. Well, let me just draw a diagram. So you have x and then it is bounded which means that you have a another bound so all the terms lives in here right well you might think about the bolzano raystrass theorem right which is precisely the case so if it's bounded then 
that means that all the s n's s n primes are in some let's say y right <laughs> now we consider the range at s b range of s n prime because it might have duplicates but we don't want to have duplicates we don't want duplicates so s b range of this if the range is finite if the range of s finite then what then we know that there's a subsequence the subsequence of this sequence converges to some point A and S. Right? And of course, then there's a subsequence of original sequence. Right? Then we have A is greater than or equal to X is greater than the SN. Contradiction. Right? Now, if if the range is infinite, if the range is infinite, and well, although it is infinite, but it might have like a L element in S that has that has like multiple terms equal to it, but if we just let so for A and S might have multiple s n equals a pick the one with minimum index well then we have another subsequence of distinct terms We need this. This is crucial. A sequence of distinct terms. And then we know that, okay, infinite. Then we know that S is a subset of X, Y. Well, uh, we go from previous theorem about compact sets, right? Well, x, y is compact. x, y is compact. And s is, s is an infinite subset of x, y. Right? So s has a limit point in x, y. s has a limit point in x, y. Right, which means that if it's a limit point, we use previous theorem again. I think is somewhere here. If it's a limit point of the set, then there's a sequence such that it converges to the limit point. X Y, which means that exists a sequence sequence in the range of the sequence such that such that uh s prime n k t a sequence of this right no 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 s s n k t this converges to limit point let me call this limit point I don't know P converges to P okay where's the SN aren't they S prime S prime S prime KT converges to P right is a so this Sub sequence of 
s prime t and s prime t is sub sequence of s prime n and this is a sub sequence of s n right well this means that okay there's a sub sequence that converges right converges to p right well p p is in x y right by the theorem like has a limit point limit point in x y means that p is in x y right by the definition x y itself is a metric space now which means that p is greater than equal to x greater than this or p is an e again a contradiction right and <laughs> we have to do part c we want to show that the such real numbers satisfy a and b are unique it's a unique number having properties both a and b unique real number so to prove the uniqueness suppose p and q are different that both satisfy p q has a b and without loss of generality p less than q now let x be that at x between p and q and p has p has property b right which means sn less than x for all n written n but this means that q don't have a right because sn less than x less than q of course sn all the sn cannot converge to q so q don't have a a contradiction right so the theorem is proved and now we're finally done with sequence to jump to series <coughs> so to define series to define infinite series we just consider the partial sum right sn equals to consider the partial sum and the series converges means that sn converges ak converges means sn converge Right, so like to work with series is basically the same as working with sequences. But although we're studying sequence essentially, but the series still got this like value for us to study. <laughs> and here are three theorems. So the first one says that okay, a n converges if and only if the co Cauchy. Cauchy criterion. This is basically Cauchy, right? This is basically S M plus one minus S N minus one or whatever. S M S M minus S N plus N minus one. Right? <laughs> This is like the Cauchy thing. You can take a look at your own, right? Because we're focusing on complex series. I forgot to tell you. Sorry. We're talking about complex series. Well, complex numbers is... When you're, when you're thinking about addition, complex plane and the two-dimensional plane are basically the same. Because we're only talking about addition, not multiplication. Right? If you multiply complex numbers, it's not the same as multiplying real numbers and the Cartesian plane. But 
for addition is just coordinate wise addition. So they're like isomorphic under addition. If you know what I'm talking about. So this direction also holds. Right? This is complete. It's complete. Right? The statement of Cauchy criterion of sequences. And now if we take a special case, m equal to n, then we have this is true, which means that a series converges implies each term converges to zero. If you consider the harmonic series, right? Also this, this one, series of non-negative terms converges if and only if it's partial sums for a bounded sequence. Partial sums, non-negative terms, means that the partial sum is increasing. If it's bounded, then it converges. Just think about the monotone convergence theorem for sequence. We're good. And now here's the comparison test. Comparison test. Well, okay. If a n is less than or equal to c n, where a n is a fixed number, then we know that, okay, if c n converges, then a n converges. Here the an is the norm, the absolute value. It's also about complex numbers. It's also about complex values and complex numbers. So uh, if by ck converge, we know that Cn is a real sequence, and An is a complex sequence. Cn is a real sequence, so we can just so we can just take out the absolute value because they're all like greater than some absolute value. Then it's positive; it's not negative. So then we have Ak is less than or equal to. This is the triangle inequality. This is by our assumption. Assumption, right? So which means that AK converges. Again, by the Cauchy criteria, right? And for B, B is, is that, okay, if this is true, D diverges and A diverges. This is basically a comparison test, right? If the contrapositive means that if A n converges, then B n converges, right? A n converge, D n converge by part A. And this is equivalent to saying that D n diverge, A n diverge, contrapositive. And that's it. Well, okay, I'll just keep on going to lecture 12. Hello, everyone. Here's lecture 12. Let's just keep on going for lecture 12. Let's just finish it. Okay. Continue. So in many cases, the terms of series is decreasing. So with dealing with that, Cauchy has a theorem about theorem is such that a quite thin subsequence of the original sequence determines the convergence of the original series. So which is this one. So it is, it is non-negative, it's decreasing. The series, this converges if and only if this series converges. Well, to let this be the case, suffices to show the boundedness of series. Why? Because they're not negative. Since partial sum 
is increasing, right? So let S n this T n is equal to say T k T k a one plus two to the a two plus plus t to the k a k. Now we have we have when n is less than two k. They have S n. I just write it somewhere here. This is less than because a is decreasing. Right. And this is equal to tk. So we have s n tk. This is the first thing. Now if n is greater than 2k. If a two S N is greater equal to T K. Right? Like do the same thing. So for the first one, we know that if T K is bounded, T K is bounded means S N bounded. And for two in place that implies that S N bounded means that T K is bounded. Well, this thing, this thing is the direction of TK bounded. It's the direction of this direction. And similarly, this part is the direction of this for the theorem. And we're done. Now with application, right? This converges if p is greater than one and diverges if p is less than one. Now if p is less than or equal to zero, it diverges, right? Because one over n p does not converge to zero. If it does converge to zero, how come this? That converges. How come this converges? The necessary statement of being converged does not satisfy. <laughs> right? Well, if P is greater than zero, then we use Cauchy criterion. So, 1 over n to the P converges, then we know that. 2 to the k, 2 to the k, nah, 2 to the k, p converges, f and only f, 2 to the 1 minus p times k, converge. <laughs> so focus on this. to the 1 minus p. If it's less than 1, then it converges. Right, because it's a geometric series. If 2 to the 1 minus p is greater than 1, then we know that p is less than or equal to 1. Right? It diverges. Because for geometric series, right? Just talk about the geometric because our series is one's p to the k, and k is k is like approaching, so we're good. And now we have another looking good looking series. 
well, <clears throat> if P is greater than 1, then this series converges. Less than equal 1 implies divergence. Now to prove this, I will know that the log function, the natural, the log here represents the natural log. So log n increases, then n log n increases, right? If it increases, then 1 over n log n decreases. And since they're all positive, we use Cauchy criterion. We use Cauchy criterion. So to the k of 1 over 2 to the k log 2 to the k, it is equal to use your knowledge from grade 12. is equal to and is equal to 1 over log 2 log 2 to the power of p 1 over k to the p and then we apply the previous theorem right so apply the theorem like with n is equal to n. And now I'm gonna do something about root test and ratio test. Okay. All right, so re root test. So root test is that if you're given a series, we put alpha is the lim upper limit of this sequence. But this is equal to alpha. So you now part A, part B, part C. If alpha is less than one, then it converges. If it's greater than one, then it diverges. If it's equal to one, it gives no info. Mm -hmm. So, part A. Well, we use, so we know that we can pick, we pick beta such that, um, we pick alpha less than beta. And alpha is less than one, right? So there exists n such that this implies right and then we take power of n well some geometric series is happening right now since beta is less than one this converges so if this converges in the comparison test by the comparison test oh oh comparison test is from last lecture by the comparison test right Like basically from we can we can we can know that okay, this converges. So we know that this implies A N converges. Right. Comparison. <laughs> this is A for B. For B of a greater than one, if by the theorem, right? Some subsequential converges to this subsequential limit. So we have a n greater than one for infinite many of 
right? It's like this one. <laughs> so we know that the sequence a n k does not converge to zero. Well, if this cannot converge to zero, also a n can converge to zero, right? So, so this can converge. And for alpha equal to one, we just consider these two sequences, the series, right? Okay. Well, we're done with this. Now here's the ratio test. Well, the ratio test states that, okay, we take alpha equals the upper limit of a n plus one, a n. We pick this. Well, it converges if um, lamp soup is less than one. So, pick again, pick this, right? So it exists n such that we have this is true, right? So a n plus one, and then so. Which means that for n greater equal to n, we have a n is less than b to the power of negative n times a to the n times b to the power of n. Right? Now since b is between 1 and n, 0, so we know that this converges. This is a geometric series. Right, so we know that <coughs> b negative n times a to the n times this also coverage, right? Well, this is equal to no. This this coverage while this is this squared in this and this coverage implies and coverage comparison well b b says oh if it's greater than equal to one then a n plus one is greater equal to a n for all so we know that of course a n cannot approach to zero right if it can't converge to zero how come the series gonna coverage okay now we're done with the ratio test and now with that being said we can study power series so the coefficient is a sequence of complex numbers. And z, z is a complex number. And this, this sequence, no, this series is a power series. Right? So generally, the power series, the convergence or divergence usually depend on your choice of z. Usually in some range in a complex plane. And now here's the theorem. So if we let alpha equals the limb soup of Cn, and let the radius, so basically a complex plane, right? And here's the radius of 
convergence r radius where r is equal to 1 over alpha right so if it lives if the if the if the complex number picked lives inside the circle then the series converges if it's outside the circle then it diverges right okay oh, oops well you know what i'm saying so now we should prove it so <clears throat> we let a n equals to c and z to the n and we do root test right <laughs> we know that the limb soup of this is equal to the limb soup of n root of uh, v to the n cn right well this is equal to z times cn which is equal to z times alpha <laughs> right We move this to here z times alpha well by root test by root test right if this is less than one which means that z is less than one over alpha converge gruden diverge Here's an examples. Like consider this series. Well the radius is equal to one. And if it's on the boundary, then it diverges because Z cannot converge to zero. Well for this series, the radius of convergence is equal to one. And it converges for Z lives on the boundary. <laughs> right, and you can argue this by the comparison test. Now we're gonna do some uh, summation by parts, which is this, which is the formula, just the formula. So, given two sequences, And we have the partial sum of a n times b n is equal to this. We'll just prove it. So sp q a n b n Yeah. Right, everything is unchanged except for this. Right? This is equal to n b n minus n plus one b n. Right? And this is equal to sub it in. Plus a q b q. <laughs> Just the formula. And now we should prove this theorem. So partial sum is bounded. 
and BN is decreasing, decrease and coverage is zero, then the sequence coverages. Well, AM, AM is bounded, so we, so we just choose M such that, you know, that AN, right? Now, because B is coverage, right? So, their partial sum. This is argued by the Cauchy criteria. Right? This whole thing. This is like straightforward substitution. <coughs> this is less than or equal to M times the whole thing plus MBQ minus MBP. Why we can do this? Why is this true? Because BN is, is decreasing, right? And a n is bounded, right? <coughs> so like the in inequality won't change the sign; it won't flip. <coughs> so, <coughs> with that being said, we can factor out an m, and then we pull it out of the absolute value. Q minus one. Q minus one here. <laughs> Whew. So this is equal to two M B P. U M B N sin epsilon and here's the Cauchy criteria for P here right now. So the coverage is now for this one we apply we apply theorem by the previous one, right? Let B n equals to this, and A n is equal to, cause, well, the C n's, the C n's like, it's like alternating, right? It's alternating, right? And it converges to zero. And you apply this, then we know that, well, a and B N is equal to basically C N. If we let this alternate this and we apply the previous theorem, are good. Alternating series. Wait. No, oh, okay. Let's duplicate. Okay, whatever. So <laughs> The last term states that, okay, if the radius of convergence is one, so if r equals to one over alpha equals to one, and suppose the complex, oh, it's not even complex anymore, it's a real sequence, sequence such that it converges to zero, then it covers at every point on the circle, especially at expect possibly as z is equal to 1. Well, look, we let an equals to z to the n, 
and the bn is equal to c to the n. And then we apply theorem 3.42, right? So we know that an partial sum is equal to 1 minus z and plus 1, 1 minus z, <laughs> this thing, right, it's so less than equal to this, right, because Because um, 1 minus z to the n plus 1 by a triangle inequality, right? Right? Right. This is the, uh, this is by the formula of geometric series. And a n is less than or equal to 2 this. And this is fixed. So the partial sums are bounded. bounded right partial sums are bounded this this right and we apply three four two it converges four z is not equal to one right if z is equal to one this will be equal to zero but we don't know about z is equal to one possibly right so we're done